All right, folks, God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It, 4321 Before the Fire. Okay, I want to start with, first of all, I want to start with James. Listen, God bless you, brother. I mean, I mean, God bless you. My heart goes out to you. I watched your video. I watched it with Corey and Zach, and I honestly wanted to give you a hug, and I wanted to just, just say, James, just please stop and listen, okay? Um... Before we start talking about that, okay, James, I want you to know this, no matter what. Because of this whole weird situation that's going on right now, the Lord used the entire situation to begin a series of insane supernatural events that have happened over the last two days. I started a folder with them. Corey and Zach have been witnesses to them. Uh, for anyone that's watched my ministry that the Lord gave me, and you know that the Lord has sent me places that have produced absolutely mind-boggling, miraculous events, like going to Chinati or going to Black Rock with two Black Rocks, just to go to Chinati, just to be able to pack up and go and take an LZ, take my wind blades, take my parachute, and tell everybody that before I left that the Lord God was sending me to the desert. I I had no idea. I was hoping it would be maybe the end. And the Lord told me, you're going and tell everybody that I told you you're going. That I'm going to give you a, something to jump out of in the desert. You're going to skydive somewhere into the desert. And I will pick that place and you will know that it was me. And so I did that. I stepped out on faith. Hebrews, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those of you that saw it, did you see the miracles? Did you see the two rocks? I'm the guy that the Lord God chose to show what being on the rock is. Two halves of the same rock put together and made into one rock. The Lord God walked me down a riverbed in Chinati. He told me to pick up two rocks out of hundreds of trillions of rocks. And I'm not exaggerating. That's not an exaggeration. That riverbed goes on for miles and miles and miles, and it's nothing but rocks. So there are hundreds of trillions of rocks. And he said, pick up those two rocks. It's all documented. I'm the very person that the Lord God would use to show what being on the rock is. There's two halves. You have a good and evil inside of you. It's male and female energy in opposition to each other. Light and dark, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord gave me two halves of the same rock, and he told me, Jonathan, now put them together. I had no idea. I just, when I looked down and the Lord said, pick up those rocks. I did what he said. I told everybody I was going to the desert to jump. The odds of being able to get a, a any kind of aircraft to jump out of there were like slim to none. The closest drop zone was two hours away. It was, I was like, can you imagine if I told everybody the Lord told me to go to the desert and to take all my gear and he said that I was going to jump into the desert, which I did. I committed to it. And I and can you imagine if I went and nothing really happened? Do you know what happened? <laughs> it's all documented. I went, showed up in Chinati. The guy walks out, gives me my my cabin, my little cabin that I had. Danny, the one of the caretakers, walked out and said, Johnny, you know what? Your cabin, which was all river stones, about this big, the entire building was river, river stones. The entire, all the walls, everything was river stones. Like in the Bible, you're all being built up as living stones, like we were all one thing and now we're here. He said, Jonathan, you're building, uh, it was cracked in half right down the middle. <laughs> when he said that, I was like, what? And he looked at me, he goes, yeah, your building was cracked in half right down the middle. We had to cinch it together. This company came out and they put brackets on the corners and they put these big cables on it. They lifted the whole thing off the ground and then we put it back down on a rock foundation. <laughs> and I'm in a little Garden of Eden setting. Okay, if you don't understand the miracle just in that, then maybe you just can't see. If anyone can't see the, the miracle in that, then maybe they just can't see it. 
See, we're all being built up into a spiritual house. The Lord God's putting us back together by flipping all of us and making us all into little building blocks. Everyone that gets converted, there's another one. There's another lethos. Put that one on the new temple. Here's another lethos. Put that one on the temple. Here's another lethos means stone. Here's another lethos. You're all being built up as living stones in a holy temple for God to occupy. There's no building that's going to be the third temple. We are the third temple. Just like Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So I'm there and this guy just offers that information to me out of nowhere. I look down on the landing, the rock landing now, because it got picked up and set down now on a rock. You know, like we're all put on the rock, right? I was just like, what? I looked down and said, since 1937. <laughs> you know what 1937 is? Lust and desire. And I was like, wow, because we were on the rock, but because of lust and desire and because of the forbidden fruit, here we all are. Isn't it fascinating? I was in a Garden of Eden setting in the middle of the desert, this little tiny Garden of Eden thing. I mean, how crazy, right? The Lord told me to get a Royal Enfield motorcycle. I was like, what? I didn't want a motorcycle. I had no desire whatsoever to have a motorcycle. The Lord told me, I want you to get this Royal Enfield. I was like, okay. I did what he said, and it sat there right in, in front of that little building. I'll show you the pictures in a little while. It's all documented. You know what the Royal Enfield is? Those of us that are part of the Royal Enfield, God's princes that went out and here we are. So there's a Royal Enfield motorcycle with a crown on it sitting right in front of a building that was made up of river rocks that was split in half but had been bound together and set back down on a rock in a garden bean setting. Okay, if that wasn't enough, which could have been just plenty, but the Lord told me, now I'll show you where your LZ is. <laughs> Let's take a little look at that. Watch this. Okay, so I haven't seen this video in a long time, so if you guys will indulge me, this is just going to... Guys, the Lord walked me into the art gallery, the same art gallery that he used to get me to go to Chinati. He walked me in there yesterday with... I walked in there with Corey and Zach. I was with Corey and Zach, and the Lord told me right in front of him, just like when, when we were in Houston, and the Lord told me, Jonathan, I want you to go out tonight to the ark. Tell Corey and Zach right now as witnesses that the Lord said he would show up and prove that our eyes that goes to heaven, he'll show up and prove where it goes to a star. And that night, he said Jim and Karen had to be there. Corey and Zach are witnesses. Karen and Jim went. I got a video. Alyssa and Alex showed up. We were over at the place in Beach City. Everybody was eating. It was about to rain. And I heard the Lord say, you have to go now. Go right now, Jonathan. So I told uh, Corey, I was like, we got to go now. I told Jim and Karen, we got to go now. The Lord said, go now. So we went out there in uh, the little building that I was converting um, for the get-together called the ark, the little building that's had ark written on it, that turned to white light during the video, that, that building. We got out there and the clouds coalesced and made an eye in the sky with the stars still out to prove that our other eye went to a star. I don't know if you understand what, how insane that is as a miracle. It's all documented. But I'm going to show you Chinati right now because the Lord yesterday walked me into that art gallery. The one that had the painting on the wall of a shepherd leading sheep in Chinati, Big Bend. Chinati is in Big Bend. There's a shepherd leading sheep in the desert in Big Bend. And it said, Melvin Warren, and the Lord said, go photograph that. When I walked in the gallery and the gallery owner said, oh, I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes like Big Bend. That's when I had just prayed, Lord, you want me to go to the desert? You want me to tell everybody that you told me to go to the desert and take my my parachute and my wind blades, my whole LZ? I have a portable LZ landing zone, wind directional, so I can see the wind, which way to land. <laughs> and I said, Lord, that's so hard to just do. And I was driving in my car and I was praying and I said, Lord, do you really want me to take my wind blades 
And right then I looked over to make a turn and there was two wind blades sticking out of this asphalt in front of a building. Right as I was saying the word wind blades. And the word, Lord said, go in that building with the wind blades. <laughs> I was like, go in the building with the, go in the building with the wind blades. And when I walked in the door, some guy, I kind of peeked in, some guy goes, Hey, how's it going? I'm so and so. Yeah, well, come on in. And he's like, Yeah, I specialize in artists that do West Texas landscapes like Big Bend. Well, Chinati is in Big Bend. And I was just like, What? And so I knew the Lord had walked me in that door. And I was just like, and then the biggest, the painting that was on main display, I looked right at it, and it was a shepherd leading sheep in Big Ben, Chinati, where Chinati is. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I got to go to Chinati. I get it. I get it. And uh, the Lord said, photograph the artist's name. I asked the guy if it was okay to photograph the painting. He said, sure. And I photographed Melvin Warren. Melvin means chief, and Warren means watchman. So... That was the Lord letting me know, you're my chief watchman for the end. So now you can either believe that or not. I don't care, but all the evidence in a court of law, all the evidence I have will speak for itself. <laughs> so just wait. Because the Lord sent me to the same art gallery yesterday. And he used the entire situation that's going on right now in order to get me over to that art gallery. You know why? to show me we all need to be watching and waiting right now. <laughs> yeah, that's why. I was like, wait. Uh huh. He sent me over to the art gallery. I'm going to give you the testimony. I've documented everything. Corey was right there too. Corey was there when the Lord sent me to Black Rock. The Lord walked me right in the same art gallery. One of the most bizarre testimonies in the world as well, but every single one proves supernaturally. Let's watch this one real quick. This is from Chinati. Let's Let's watch this. So fascinating, there's a star on my building. This is the building that was split directly in half and they picked it up off the ground and they put it on a rock foundation. Do you understand that is a beyond the brain miracle? Considering I'm the guy that's showing everybody what being on the rock is, his purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. So like the building split in half, two different halves. It got picked up and put back together and set down on the rock, which is what I'm trying to do for everyone. Now watch this. Here we go. River was split in half. They put metal jackets on the corners on all four corners and they pulled it back together. And then they jacked it all up and they set it on a rock foundation so it, that they could keep the building. Oddly enough, this little like garden oasis in the middle of the desert, right here where I put my foot, right there, it says June 1937. And the letter J, the, the hook of the J makes a W. So to skydive into a place in the desert that's like a little oasis, like the Garden of Eden. And let me find myself up right into those. I'm the Knights of Neek. <laughs> Neek! I'm going to pause it right there, okay? This is the Lord's humor right there. I just saw those horns and I started laughing because I remembered a scene from Mighty Python and the Holy Grail, the Knights of Neek. Did you know that after I did this, the Lord told me to look up the Knights of Neek? And I was like, what? Look up the Knights of Neek? That's weird. And he says, we are there. We are the keepers of the holy words. <laughs> what are the odds, huh? I mean, okay. I'm making a joke because I see the horns on the wall and I go, I'm one of the knights of meek, 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 just joking around. And then the Lord uses that to tell me, look up the knights of meek. We are the keepers of the holy words. That's who I am. Pay attention. Here we go. <laughs> manifest like this considering all the other stuff that the Lord's had me do is just absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and the spiritual representation of the whole thing is just staggering it's it's not almost believable with the Royal Enfield motorcycle Royal Enfield like we are the Royal Enfield we're like Zion the Royal Enfield everything else is out
So if you read Revelation 22, and that, you know, they're permitted to enter into the city like the royal infield. There's a royal infield bike that's got a crown on it. It's a mirror reflection. There's 1937 right there on the ground, right there. Uh, like the flow, the commercial progressive uh, 1937 lessons are in a little situation, like a little Garden of Eden. It's just not even possible. It's so far beyond my brain. And then the two rocks that were separate, that were the same rock, split in half. And the Lord told me, put them back together. And then I came back to this room and I opened my Bible to Ephesians 2. He'll make one new man from the two. Impossible. The document, I'm going to pick up the LZ, which is way beyond that big tree. Okay, I'm going to pause it now. I just wanted, because I want to frame things up because this is important. The Lord, God whom I serve, used this whole weird thing with James. And you know, James, I mean this with all my heart. You seem like a very nice man. And, I, and I'm and i praying for you today. And my heart goes out to you. And I'm not here to beat up on you, James. Not even a little bit. But I am here to speak for the Lord and for my position because I have to. It's, it's, it's required of me. He actually told me in front of witnesses, I must. So I must. So again, speak the truth in love. Um, then we're going to talk about some other people that are trying to support you that don't speak the truth in love at all. They're, they're just very malign and evil people. But here we go. Watch this. Okay, look at all those rocks. I just want to take a moment and just consider the rocks. Okay, so there are rocks. I had to walk a mile down that riverbed before the Lord told me this is where your LZ is going to be on the way walking while I was walking I just kind of stopped and looked down and I'm like what am I doing I mean I just kind of stopped and I was like zoning out just like and the Lord said pick up those two rocks and I was like pick up those two rocks pick up those two rocks there were two rocks they were black they were about this far apart and the Lord said, pick them up. And I was like, pick up those two rocks. Pick them up. Let me show you something. Just look. Look at the rocks. Now, like, you know, what? Like, there's like a black rock. There's like a black rock, whatever. And see, But you see, some of them are lighter. Some of them are gray. Some of them are kind of black. And the Lord said, pick up those two. <laughs> you know, there's trillions of rocks as you walk down that riverbed, right? So to be the prophet that the Lord God would use to show everybody what being on the rock is, Ephesians 2, his purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. To walk me down that riverbed and to hand me a rock that was the same rock, but split in half, and to tell me to put them together, that's like something in the Bible where someone I know named Moses hit a rock and water gushed out. Now here we go. Okay, there's something else I want to look at with it. Look at all these. Look at, look at the rocks. Look at all these rocks. This is nothing but rocks. Can you imagine out of all these rocks? Out of all of these rocks. Picky looking down and seeing two rocks that were black and hearing the Lord say, pick them up and picking them up. And what you picked up was a rock that had been split in half, the size of a 50 cent piece. That's impossible. Okay, now let me see. So I'm doing a little tree. Um, he'll make one new man from the two. Impossible. The document. I'm up. No. Uh, last little video. I got myself in the dead center of the X. 
Bam. I'm on it. There it is. I'm here as instructed. Uh, the girl that was here, Izzy. Uh, she... Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, what happened was I'm, I'm looking for a scene in here. Uh, I was kind of jumping around and the, the record button came on. So sorry that you guys were just hunting with me during that process. But let's just go back and let's start from here. Watch. I'm just trying to look what order they're in. Here we go. Okay, now the vi I need to give you the order. So what you saw in the first part of this was post-jump, after the jump. What you're seeing right now is before I went to do the jump, I had set up the ZLZ exactly where the Lord told me to set it up. You'll see it's perfectly clean. It is perfectly clean. And I had taken the two halves of the same rock, put them together and set them right down in the center of the X. Just think, think about that. What do you think the odds are on that? What do you think the odds, do you understand the miracle involved just in that? Then do you understand the miracle involved when I left to find an airplane out there in the desert? Do you know how impossible that is? To find any pilot that would let you jump out of his plane with the kind of insurance problems he could have and the kind of FAA regulations he might be facing violation. There's all kinds of laws that govern that stuff, by the way, because I used to do demo jumps and you got to file some paperwork. So if I'm out in the middle of the desert, I'm trying to find that anything that will fly me to altitude so I can do the jump that the Lord has orchestrated for me. On the way to do that LZ, I pick up two houses of the same rock. He tells me, put them together. I just sit there and start crying because I knew, goodness gracious, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, has just proven to me I'm the guy that's putting the rock back together. There's no arguing that because of all the data that I've shown you and all the places he sent me and all the miracles he's wrought through me. But there's people out there that constantly say I'm a liar and they're very maligning and they're very vicious people. And you know what they like to say? Oh, I have no ill will against Jonathan. But if you just simply look at their comments, which we've saved a whole folder of, they are anything but kind. They're hateful, cruel, malicious, malevolent comments from the same people over and over again. And James, they're leaving comments on your channel praising you. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that in a little while. Now, again, James, I love you in Christ, and you seem like a super nice guy. But I'm trying to help you, and I hope you'll heed the warning, and I hope you won't do what someone else did. And I'm going to show y'all what that person did. Here you go. Okay, here we go. Keep going. You see that LZ right there? I don't know if you guys noticed. When I'm walking, I want you to look at the leading edge right here. You see those boulders on the... See, look at the corner right here. See the boulders? You see the dirt over the edge of the tarp? Okay, let me tell you something. The Lord told me to do that. I was like, you want me to put boulders on the corner? The Lord told me to anchor it down severely. And I was thinking, well, that's probably a good idea if a wind whipped up or something. But see, the Lord knew that he was going to make it rain when I left to go get my plane. By the way, the plane again, which was impossible to get. You can't just get a plane out in the desert. You can't just find a plane to jump out of. <laughs> the closest LZ was two hours away. Uh, the closest I'm drop zone, I mean, was two hours away. I called him. I was on the phone. I had friends of mine calling different airports, seeing if there was any way. No one could find anything. I was in the desert. Watch, I'm going to ambush cat. Watch this. I was in, the, I was driving on a highway and I was going like, Lord, man, I've, I've told everybody that you sent me out here to do this. I don't have an airplane yet, and I mean, I've checked Marfa, I've checked Alpine, I checked every place surrounding area, I got in the phone books, I started looking anywhere and everywhere, I could find anything to jump out of, and there was nothing, and I was on the phone with Kat, and I called Kat, and I, and I was like, Kat, would you help me, like, would you start calling some more places again, just to see if you can find any pilot I can talk to, I was just like, and while I was talking to Kat, the Lord, I heard the Lord tell me, go to Alpine Airport right now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, hang on, watch this. I'm gonna, I'm, this is, let's have some fun, guys. The Lord has communicated to me now. 
It's time to watch. That's what this is all about, this whole thing with James. The Lord said, I want everyone to be watching and waiting now. Now, James, we'll talk about your thing in a minute, but I want to talk about the message that the Lord's given me through all this thing and all the miracles. Well, watch this. So anyway, there is no there is no airplane to get in the desert. There is no airplane to find. I couldn't find an airplane. And to find one that someone would let you jump out of, and to find one that had a door that opens during flight, you just don't find airplanes. Hey, cat. Yeah. It's me. Hey, listen, I'm doing a video, and I'm sorry I'm crash bombing you. But I'm telling everybody about Chinati. And when I was there, and I'd been there for a while, and I was freaking out because I didn't have an airplane yet. I had no way to jump, and I was talking to you on the phone. Is that right? Yes. Did I have you looking for airplanes for me? Yes. yes. Come on, can't find an airplane. Do it. Work, man. <laughs> and so I was driving down a desert highway, and I was talking to Cat, and Cat was looking for me, and I heard the Lord tell me go to Alpine Airport right now. Does that sound right to you? Yes, exactly. Okay, so that is true, correct? Yes, it is. And so I drove to, I said, Cat, I'll call you back. And I drove, to, I drove to Alpine Airport, and then I got there. And so, okay, Cat, so I'm going to just run through the rest of the story. Okay, but okay. that's your testimony, right? Yes, it is. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, you're welcome. So anyway, so I was, Cat was trying to find an airplane, whatever. So... It was an, a total miracle. I go to this little teeny air, it's like, you know, one or two little runways. I'm talking, this is a little dinky desert airport. And I go and I'm, there's one little teeny building, little hut. And I walk in, there's a guy on the phone and he's on the phone. He doesn't want to talk to me. He went, he, he looked at me and was like, eh, and I'm like, you know, and he's like, he's like nods. And then I just sit down and he, he was talking to one of his buddies and then uh, I was just sitting there waiting, and then uh, some other guy walks through the door, opens the door, walks into the little building. He's got tats all over him, and the guy on the phone looks up at him like, like, hey, it's one of his buddies, you know, showing up. And then it was because his buddy showed up, then he hangs up the phone, then he had time to talk to me. And so when the guy walks in and he hangs up, I say, hey, I'm my name's John Clegg. Yeah, look, I'm looking for anyone that's got an airplane that, might be willing to take me to altitude and let me just jump out of their plane. I'm, I'm a pro skydiver. I, you know, I have a pro license. So, uh, and they both looked at each other at the same time. They went K right then and there. They both said Kate at the same time. And, and they go, yeah, Kate, yeah, Kate will do it. And I was like, Oh wow. You think so? They go, yeah, he's on approach right now. So Kate, was on approach, he was delivering an airplane for someone, I think, that bought an airplane out there. So Kate is on approach, getting ready to land an airplane. The Lord told me, go there right now. <laughs> and I show up, and guess what? There's my airplane. And so I meet Kate. Kate lands, and I go over, and I talk to him. I'm like, hey, you know, blah, blah. He goes, yeah, man, I'll take you. No problem. Where do you want to go? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I think we're picked. I forgot what day it was, but he's like, yeah, I'll take you for sure. There may be some weird weather. It gets weird out here. I'm like, whatever. Just give me the altitude. That's all. I just need altitude, man. I'll take 5,000 or above, whatever you got. I'll do a 5,000 footer if I have to. And so he's like, yeah, no problem. So now I have my airplane. That's a miracle. You don't find an airplane that the door opens during flight. They're not easy to find. You don't find some guy that's willing to let you do it. There's insurance issues. You don't find a guy that's willing to go, eh, I don't care about the FAA. <laughs> it's like, okay. Anyway, so I found my airplane. That's a miracle. Here's my LZ. See it? All See the rocks on the edges? There's big rocks on the corners. You see the dirt on the leading edge? The Lord knew he was going to, he was going to flood the, he was going to flood the river. Yeah, you know, the riverbed. There was a flash flood. Okay, here we go. Let's go back. So this is just a little story about Izzy. It doesn't really matter. I'll skip that so we don't have to listen to it. From the, uh, from the airplane. So here it is. So as I was walking, I heard the Lord say, look down. And I looked down. And I, I put these back down. But I looked down and I saw these two rocks. 
I looked down. I mean, I heard the Lord say, look down. And I looked down and I heard the Lord say, pick up these two rocks. And I picked them up. And this is unbelievable. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Two rocks out of all these rocks. <laughs> they were split. These, this rock was two separate rocks sitting on the ground in a riverbed with trillions of rocks. And I heard the Lord say, look down in my spirit. And then I saw these and I heard the Lord say, pick up those two rocks. I just burst into tears. I didn't know what else to do. How in the world? It's a rock that's, I'm gonna put it exact, there we go. Look. That's insane. <laughs> Glory to God. How bizarre is this? Okay, now look at my LZ. Look at my LZ. Look at the LZ. Look at this dirty triangle. Look at this triangle on the right. It's filthy dirty. Look at how the look at how the dirt stuck to the triangle. See it? And then look at the other one that's perfectly clean. It's totally clean. The only thing on it are my footsteps. Those are footsteps. The only thing that's dirty on the side are my footsteps. There's a clear running stream right here. Okay, guys, I don't know if you understand that for that to happen, let's see, my building was split in half in a Garden of Eden setting, representing that we were that we were that temple of living stones and we got split. Here we, it's in a Garden of Eden setting. It says lust and desire on the, since, since lust and desire, that's when it got split because those of us that chose to come here, we chose our, our being here. And then to skydive into a riverbed in a place that's Chinati means gateway, to pick up two rounds of the same rock on the way to set up your LZ from a building that well, your my building was split in half, my LZ split in half, the rock was split in half, and he has me put the rock back together, and then I land in the in the in that riverbed about twenty yards shy of that target, and that's that's my LZ, one filthy dirt dirty side representing that race of beans from the pit, the serpent race. The other one representing his his race, the sheep race. Because the serpent race is destroying the sheep race. I know what it is. It's the female energy is destroying the male energy. For him to do what you're looking at, do you know how insane that is? With a royal infield motorcycle. See, now, if you don't believe I'm an end-time harbinger from that alone, you don't belong at this channel. You don't. That's mind-destroying. It's not even partly... I mean, it's just insane. <laughs> it's like, look at it. I'm here to pick up the LZ. And look at this. One half is completely clean. The other half is completely dirty. And look, look at the dirt, how it's concentrated to the part of the one triangle. Like, look. I mean, look at that triangle that grabbed all the dirt. Triangle on that half. It's, it's, you can see the triangle, it's all dirt. And then right down the middle, straight in the middle of the X is a line. And then the other half is clean. That's just crazy. <laughs> and some. Okay, now look. 4610, I believe. Down. The middle. Look at that. Okay, well now what I'm gonna show you is I took pictures of that rock before the jump in the dead center of that thing. Do you understand? Okay, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to make sure everybody has a little bit of understanding who I am and what I do and what I've done for the Lord. It's really important you understand because 
the Lord sent me to the art gallery, the same art gallery that he sent me to, to go to Chinati. It was insane. Go in the building with the wind blades? While I'm saying you want me to take my wind blades? Yes, Jonathan, go in that building over there with the wind blades. That building over there with the wind blades? Yes, go there, Jonathan, go in. I don't even know what it is. Trust me, go in. I go in. Hey, how you doing? So-and-so, I specialize in artists that do Trinati Big Ben paintings. Come on in. What? Yeah, check out that one. Oh, wow, well, that's crazy. That's a shepherd leading sheep in Big Ben, like Trinati. Oh, wow. It says Melvin Warren, chief watchman. No big deal. Looks like I'm going to Trinati. What happens in Trinati? Your building split in half, but it was picked up and set back down on a rock foundation. Uh -huh, because it, he was showing me what happened to us. We got rolled, you know, like rock and roll, you know, like the rolling stones. Yeah. And he was showing me a physical manifestation of it. I literally lived out a physical manifestation of understanding what being on the rock is and him showing me that, Jonathan, I'm using you as my person to put everyone back on the rock. So when Jesus comes... You're ready and waiting for him. So that's what this is really all about. That's what he used you for, James. And I'm going to implore you before this video is over to listen to me again. And I'm going to show you your error in the last video you just made. And then I'm going to show you to be very careful of the people that are patting you on the back, leaving you comments, because they've aligned themselves with a complete lunatic that has a channel named Gene Rebel, and it's complete and utter psychotic vitriol. Go go watch every one of his videos and go read every one of the comments on all the videos. I've had people that, ha, you know, took the task of going and harvesting comments from the people that are leaving comments who all I did in their lives was try and help people that had nowhere to live, live and invest in it. There it is. There's proof. So let's go through the proof. Let's do it. There's Jonathan's parachute that the Lord told him to make. V for vengeance. That's a, a V right side up and a V upside down. And it has vampire fangs on it. It was uh, kind of designed after Vlad Eyewear, vampire sunglasses, because the whole system you're in is vampiric. Cain and Abel, cannibal. And that's what the Lord's going to take vengeance on is the cannibalistic system. That's twin female. That was started by a twin female energy. Okay, there we go. That's why Debbie Harry and all of her buddies, you know, do their little cakes where they cut out their own hearts and eat them. They consume themselves. Uh, that's what the system is. You consume yourself. So there's the art gallery. There's no, there, there the wind blades are when the Lord said, go in the place with the wind blades. So now I'm just going to give you this testimony because he walked me in the same art gallery yesterday. There's the painting with the shepherd leading sheep in Chinati or Big Ben where Chinati is. And there is Melvin Warren. So now everything I said, I'm proving. I'm not just saying, oh, the Lord told me. Here's an interesting painting from the art gallery. It's Jacob. It's Jacob. And look at the shadow of the cross. It's fascinating. It's upside down. And when we get converted, we get inverted to right side up. And then we've been made whole with Christ. Searching for greener pastures, Melvin Warren. See, everything I'm telling you, I can back up with absolute data. But there's people, again, there's people that have these crazy channels, like this guy named Gene Rebel. And let me show you what Gene does. This is what Gene does to Jonathan Clegg. Jonathan Clegg knows a good definition when he smells one. These are all pictures of me, by the way. Look at each one. So that's... That's not very nice. That's not very kind. Uh, hypocrite. That's not very kind. He has me in the toilet right here. That's not very kind. Then he has different images of me. Every single one, look, seems to be some whacked out weird image that he's obsessed with me in a very unhealthy way. See, there you go. So all this is vitriol. That's called maligning someone. That means maligning means to disparage, to abuse, to run down, to ma malign, to say ugly things about. And that's all this channel, channel does. Here's the word malign right here. It says hurtful, slander, misrepresent, malignant, 
It says malice right here, ill will, spite, malicious, intending evil, unkindness, spiteful, malign. See the word malign right there? It means hurtful, slander, misrepresent. The word contemptuous, if you're maligning someone, you're speaking contemptuously about them. That's what maligning is. You're slandering them. You're talking evil about them. You're speaking evil contemptuously. That's funny. I called Karen Sullivan up and I told Karen, Karen, the Lord told me to confront you that you're speaking contemptuously about me in front of a witness. She lied three times. It was after the whole get together, the night under the stars. And she said, oh, no. And I said, oh, no, Karen, the Lord whom I serve told me you are speaking contemptuously about me and you're speaking maliciously about the people of the ministry that are there. And she said, oh, no, no, I'm not. Right in front of me and you know, another witness, Corey, and I, she was on speakerphone. I said, no, Karen, I'm not telling you that someone told me. I'm telling you the Lord God whom I serve. You know, the one that took me to Chinati, the same one that sent me to lay hands on Karen Sullivan, because if I hadn't have shown up, she probably would have been dead within a very short period of time because she was obviously on her way out. But the Lord sent me there to lay hands on her and to tell her that if you want your miracle, you better listen to the prophet I sent. Put your money where your miracle is. Remember, Karen? Put your money where your miracle is. Either stop doing the treatments and listen to Jonathan and I will heal you or no, no, no help. So if I wouldn't have shown up, I wonder, would Karen Sullivan be alive even? <laughs> Not even close. But he sent me and I laid hands on her with a caveat. Put your money where your miracle is because the Lord was saying she talked a lot of smack because she used to be a pharmacist and she used to tell everybody what idiots they were for doing chemo and, and those other treatments. She was like, yeah, they're idiots. And I, I used to tell people that she told me personally these words. I used to tell them how foolish it was to take that stuff. And here I am doing it. And I said, well, that's what, why the billboard said, put your money where your miracle is. If you want the miracle from God, you have to quit all treatments. And she did. And she got her miracle. I laid hands on her and prayed over her. And he said, if you do what Jonathan says, I'll give you your miracle. And she did. She got it. And now she's one of the people talking more shit about me, her and her sister, than anybody out there. And they are friends of Gene Revel. That should tell you everything, people. That should show you their character. And when I confronted her about speaking contemptuously about me, I said, Karen, the Lord told me whom I serve. I didn't get told by some person. The Lord told me in front of Corey, call Karen right now and confront her. She's speaking contemptuously about you, Jonathan, and maliciously about the people of the ministry. And I said, no, I can't do it. Corey was right there. I said, Lord, I can't do that. I said, I can't just call someone up and say that. It was after the night at the, under the stars. And the Lord said, I said, Lord, if you can prove it right now, that that's, that's the deal. If you can prove it right now in front of a witness, I'll call her right now. The Lord said, open that book over there. Right? I was like, oh, great. Here we go. And so I opened the book. I'm going to make a phone call right now so you can hear it from the witness. So you can hear what the witness said because... This whole video I'm doing is to let you know what the Lord told me. He sent me to that art gallery again. <laughs> I was like, what? And you know what he told me? Make sure everyone's watching and waiting. So here, let me uh, let me make this call real quick. Hopefully it's still up. It's kind of late. Yo. Yo, hey, Corey, I'm on. I, you're on speakerphone. I'm doing a video. Yeah. So. When I was in my living room after the night under the stars, we were just chatting and out of left field, the Lord told me to call Karen Sullivan and to confront her. She was speaking contemptuously about me. Is that true? Yes. Is that, you stand before the Lord God? Before the Lord God, yes. Okay. And I, I didn't want to do it. Is that true? True. And then I said, Lord, if you can prove it right now in front of a witness that she's doing that, then I'll call her. And then the Lord told me, Jonathan, open that book right there. And I opened it up. And what did it say? Speaking contentiously, the exact words. The exact same words. And I was like, oh, my God, you got to be kidding. Did I call Karen Sullivan up and say, Karen, this is really burdensome. It's awkward. But this is what happened. And the Lord told me to call and confront you. And what did she do? 
She lied three times. She denied it and lied three times, and I asked her directly three times, is that true, yes or no? Yes. And you know that we have to give an account to the Lord God, yes? Yes. And then after the third time, I said, Karen, I am standing before the Lord God, and I am asking you now. This is the person that laid hands on her. And I said, I am asking you right now before the Lord God, yes or no, are you speaking contemptuously? What did she say? Oh, well, she finally admitted it. Yeah, she started giggling. Is that true? Yeah, she goes, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, well, okay, yeah, I've started doing that. Is that true, yes or no? Yes. And then after that is when uh, the whole ARC thing went south, and she started just, she did some fake apology videos, and then it was time to kick everybody out. Does that sound like the short version? That's a short version. The same apology videos that she, with her own efforts, had taken down. That's right. So she produced some videos where she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I was running Johnny down. Did she use the words running him down? Yes or no? Yes. She did. She was speaking contemptuously about me. After that, did I call other people and did a bunch of other people just all of a sudden start telling me all the evil crap she was saying about me? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So now that stands as a witness before the Lord. Yes or no? Yes. You're willing to stand before the Lord and say, yeah, I, you can judge me on every word I just said. Yes. Okay, myself as well. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so now I've established a record that's absolute truth. She lied to me three times, and then I said, I'm not, I'm telling you the Lord God whom I serve told me. And then she said, yes. Now, please listen. Um, please, James, listen to me. I'm going to talk to you when I'm done with all this. So the person that the Lord God sent to Chinati by walking him into an art gallery using a painting that was called Searching for Greener Pastures after telling me to take all my stuff, sending me out to the desert where it was impossible to get a plane. He gives me a plane. He walks me down a, a riverbed. He gives me two halves of the same rock. He made sure I knew my building was split in half and it was picked up off the ground, cinched together, and set back down on the ground. Rock, you know, kind of like maybe the new... Jerusalem might be yeah and then he splits my LZ in half when I go do my 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 drive to go catch my plane the whole valley floods and that whole LZ just gets wiped out except one triangle's dirty and one's clean and the one that's clean has a clear running stream and the Lord's showing me I clean my people I'm the one that cleans that half because the pit, you know, the other side, the twin female side, they're dirty. That's what it all represents. And I'll show it. Well, when I called Karen Sullivan and I confronted her, she wrote that she had asked the Lord for a word concerning this, and she photographed this book. I want to show you. Okay, now. <laughs> This is the book that she photographed and she said, I, uh, I sought the Lord and, and he, you know, and asked him for a word. So she cast a lot, which she says, I'm evil for doing now, by the way, her and her sister both. So she casts a lot. She opens a book. Can you imagine if you open up this book and it said malice, intending evil, unkindness, spiteful, moved by hatred, malicious, to malign, to slander, to misrepresent? And you know what's really weird is right under here it says a snake. And what's really interesting, it says wealth is an object of pursuit because it was interesting what ended up having the, happening at the ark. A lot of people put in a lot of money to try and help homeless people have a place to stay. But it all went defunct because I, I called Karen up and I said, why are you speaking contemptuously? And from that point on, it was a devolving thing. And everyone was told to get out. And I was told yeah, to make sure everyone get out like I'm the boss or something. And I, I was on a phone call and I said, so you're telling me you you want me to just leave, leave all these people on the street, handicapped people, people that have little kids. And on that phone call, which I'm sure he recorded as well, he said, well, they're not your problem, Johnny. And I'm like, well, they are. We gave someone carrying Jim a bunch of money. We fixed up this whole place for these people. They're not your problem. I'm like, what do you mean they're not my problem? We can't just leave them on the street. Well, they're not your problem. They'll figure out what to do. Why well, ain't that the love of God? <laughs> I'm not serious. This is what I've went through. So I'm telling you now, everybody listen to Jonathan. 
there's there's a big thing going on here. There's two different energies going on. Let me show you one energy. <laughs> Let me show you just one of them. Here's one energy right here. This is the Gene Rebel channel where you can go read all of these comments from the people I'm talking about. They like to go and they like to leave all these comments here on this guy that look at this stuff. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. This is what he does. Okay, so if you can look at those pictures and say that's maligning, that is disparaging, that is abusive, that it's ugly. Let me show you what the Bible says real quick. Okay, let me just show you where in the Bible now. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Look at this. Do you think do you think this person that calls his channel Gene Revel? Do you think this is loving your neighbor as yourself? It's a yes or no. Do you think this this bullet in one eye, see the bullet in the one eye? Do you know that's a total demonic thing? Did y'all know that? Because see, that's what Satan did, is he took out one of our eyes. We got rolled. What that's why I had to show you your other eye. You got to invert. It's better to pluck out one eye and enter the kingdom without the, your member than to be cast into hell where the worm never dies. Fire is never quenched. Let me show you something. When Karen sent me this, she said, well, it looks like the Lord's not finished with me yet. You see the word malign right here, which is what I called and I said, the Lord said, you're maligning me. Speaking contemptuously is maligning someone. That's exactly the definition of the word malign, to speak contemptuously to speak slanderously about them, to speak hurtfully about them. All these people started telling me all the mean crap she was saying about me. The person that the Lord sent to lay hands on her. I was like so conflicted. I was like, what's going on, man? So now, you can go read this, Special Projects 2, Be a Witness Part 2. By the way, we have a massive folder that we've been keeping off to the side with all this stuff. I want you to show you, I want to show you uh, in reference to Gene Rebel's channel. This is, this says Dead Inside, A Lost Cause, because see, the enemy knows that one eye out means you're dead inside. Do you get it? So that's why they have, so this is uh, Lost Cause clothing. See it? See the one eye that's jacked up? They know it. Let me show you Gene's channel right here. There's Gene's channel right there. See, that's his moniker. Let me show you this thing. See the demon pounding the spike in the guy's eye, the demon? Just go to Gene Rebel's channel. I challenge everyone. Go there and look at it. It's hate. It's pure hate. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. James Supplanter is doing videos, and I can tell you this. He's trying. He's not a hateful, mean, odious person, but he's misspoke. And the Lord made sure that I stepped up and said, look, I love you in Christ, but you cannot tell people that Jesus, and that you're tempting God if you're waiting and looking for the second coming of Christ. The Lord told me I had to. And you know what he did? He used that as a platform to send me back to that art gallery, that art gallery yesterday which I haven't even gotten into, which I'm going to, but I wanted to lay the groundwork for everything. Because, see, the very people that I'm showing you that were maligning me, her and her sister, and all the people associated with them, that's all they do. They don't do anything but that. Do you think that's the love of God? Do you think they serve the Lord God at that channel? You should see all the comments we have. They are so sick and so mean. And so I would encourage everyone that watches this video, please don't say anything mean to James. Don't say one mean thing to James. I've been praying for James. I watched your video, James. I love you in Christ, but you're in error again. So I need to show it to you, and I hope you, I hope you receive it. I'm going to show it to you. But we're going to get through all this because now I'm going to show everybody there's a supernatural thing that happened from all this. The Lord's telling everyone through me now, you should be watching and waiting. That's what you should be doing instead of being afraid to do it. Let me show you a comment real quick. Here's this girl, Debbie. 
Debbie wrote, James, this video caused so much conflict in me and being a newbie under Jonathan, I watched your videos because someone in our group posted it. As soon as I watched Jonathan's video this morning, I saw immediately why I had this conflict. Lesson learned. I was led to Jonathan a year ago and the Lord heard my cry and prayer. He is the chief shepherd proven by miracles. Okay, I'm going to say this in the nicest way, James. Again, you seem like a nice person. And it's not about a nice person thing right now. This is about scripture and the Lord God and serving the Lord God. You seem like a very nice man. Um, your video is hurting people like that. Okay, you are in error. Your next video that you just did, I don't ever do this, James, ever. I went through your video and I made like a little, I had to make some notes and, and just kind of nail down some points so you'll stop. I need you to see this. And I'm going to do it in love. I love you in Christ. But the people that are coming to your channel, patting you on the back, are the very people that support this lunatic Gene Revel. Think about that. They support hate and vitriol. You don't want them on you don't want them to be your allies. So here it is. He is just chief shepherd proven by miracles. Now I know be careful who you listen to while waiting on a new video from Jonathan. By the way, guys, I just want to be very clear. If you haven't taken hold of uh Cleck Files as a resource, Robert Chandler put together one of the most amazing resources ever. He he memorialized all of the Cleck stuff. You can go look at all the show notes are available, everything the Lord's given me, all the information, it's all available. And in every single folder, there's tons of video clips to watch, tons. So you can you can see all the, you know, all the data, <laughs> which is the cool stuff. Okay, so here we go, ready? Now I know to be careful who you listen to while waiting for Jonathan to do another video. He is the only one I can he see and hear, or hear and see what the Lord is teaching. What you say can hurt people. That's true, James. That's why I had to respond. The Lord told me I had to respond to you. Especially newbies. There you go. The only reason I'm responding, that's the only reason I'm responding. I will unfollow you now. Thank Jesus for Jonathan's response video. Uh, Beanie, you know, I know Beanie from the past and God bless her. J just watch Johnny's rebuke video and I'm sorry I encourage your teaching, James. I know Johnny was appointed by the Lord God to do what he does. I would say because of Johnny's videos, which brought me to the truth. Please don't take this personally, but I encourage you to listen to Johnny's video and put your teachings on hold. Okay, again, that's all I'm asking, James. Just take a break. Don't feel like you got to go respond every time. Just take a moment, okay, because I'm trying to help you. See, Karen didn't listen. Can you imagine that a prophet called you up and said, hey, man, the Lord told me you're speaking maliciously about me. He confirmed it in front of a witness. And then that person lied three times to me. And then she finally admitted it when I said, I'm standing before the Lord God. Then she finally admitted it. And then she turns her whole life as this hate Jonathan Cleck, you know, uh, saga with her sister. The Lord told me to call her up and tell her after enough was enough that he was going to remove all his blessings from her including her health. That's pretty scary. And now she's pontificating. Johnny said it would happen. I would decline immediately. That's not true. I said, I can see it happening quickly, but I'm just going to be very honest. And I just, I hate to even say this, but I'm going to say it. This is what the Lord showed me. I said, I can see it happening quickly, but honestly, the way I, the way I'm perceiving it is, He's going to have her at least well enough to see the horror that's coming. Those were my words to people that are my friends that I know. That's what I said. I didn't want to say, well, gee, Karen, here's what the Lord's showing me. But, gee, hate to be the guy to say it, but if I just have to say it, that's it. I said, I can see her declining rapidly, but the way I'm feeling is the Lord's probably going to keep her well enough to see the horror that's coming. Because she's turned so horribly against the Lord and the one the Lord sent to lay hands on her. Put your money where your miracle is. But see, now those very people, they're amassing behind you, James. They're getting behind. Oh, go get them, James. Go. Don't listen to those people. Just take a break, James. Just leave them. Just show some wisdom. Now let's get back to, let's get back to all the miracles now. Okay. 
Okay, that's enough about that. But now we have kind of a, you know, there's like a playing field. There's one team that's being really hateful and mean. There's another team, Jonathan, that's saying, hey, I'm appointed by the Lord by miracles, supernatural laying of hands on people that are blind, people that have terminal illnesses. Karen's one of them. But the Lord said he's going to remove her blessings, and I know he will. And he'll do it on his time how he wants. And she's being so arrogant. She's like, oh, where's my getting sick? I was like, damn, dude, don't you know when to stop? I was like, dude. So that's called tempting the Lord. What Karen's doing is called tempting the Lord. So now let's keep going. All right. We're going to get rid of this channel right now. I'm going to X this out. But if you want to go read. The, if you want to go read all these comments, you should go read them. If you want to see just what hatred is, go read these comments. And go read these comments by the people that are leaving comments on your videos, James. It's them. It's like, that's not good. That's bad. Anyway, all right, there you go. So we're going to X that out. We already know what the word malign means. And again, like I said, um, if someone... If, if a prophet called me up, especially the one that laid hands on me and, and said to me, Hey, the Lord told me that you're speaking evil about me, that you're m maligning me. If you were that person and I had called you and you opened up a book and the word malign was on the freaking page, do you think you could choose malleable? <laughs> Like, that's delusional. Oh, look, it's the line's not even there. I don't even see it. Oh, oh no, it's malleable. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see. The chips are gonna all fall where they may. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who wanted to file a big lawsuit, go after Karen and Jim and Karen's mom. I stood in the way and said, no, no one's gonna file a lawsuit against anyone. You're welcome. <laughs> it's like, and all I got for it was a bunch of hatred. So I'm going to wrap up this, this little, uh, the unpleasant part of this video right now by showing you this. Uh, this is from a video. You can go look at the trailer. You can go on YouTube and type in Serpent Queen uh, trailer. It's called The Serpent Queen. It's a series on like Amazon or something. And it's about the Medici castle. And it's, they have some of Michelangelo's work there that has the torso with the worm coming out of the, you know, the carving that's got the body with the head cut off with the worm in it. That's at the Medici castle. And the Serpent Queen is about the Medici thing, queen. And this is a scene from the, from the trailer and says her honey sweet if you can take the sting. And then this guy is taking a spike, see it? And he's putting it in this guy's eye. That's in the trailer. Well, isn't that great? That's exactly Gene Rebel. Look. <laughs> That's exactly Gene Rebel's look. There it is. There's Gene. Go get him, Gene. You seem like a really kind-hearted, loving guy. You do. You seem a little obsessed to me. <laughs> it's like psycho. Uh-huh. Okay, now we're done with that. Now, let's move on from there. Okay, this is where we begin... The fun, all fun, just fun. Maybe later in the video, I got to talk to you for, for a few minutes, James. I got to show you a couple of things and you must receive it. You just got to. I pray that you do. I'm, you don't You don't have to, but you're going to be given a choice. You can either choose malleable like someone else, or you can say, I own it. I'm aligned the shit out of Jonathan. Uh, by the way, I had a whole lot of people call and tell me just how bad it was. I was like, you're kidding. She's saying that about me. That's horrible. Yeah, it was pretty hurtful. I was like, she actually said that about me. Yep. I was like, that sucks. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now, let me show you Hebrews 9.28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I want to show you some interesting words. You see it says to expect fully to wait for. That's from another scripture, but I'm going to pop it all out. I'm going to be going through all these right now. I want to show you guys. So James, you use James supplanter. I don't know if you know that. In Luke 2.25, the consolation of Israel. 
So let's look at Luke 2.25 now, because this is really cool. This is something the Lord showed me that is just phenomenal. Okay, here we go. Luke 2.25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a just and devout, just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Look at the word Israel right here. See, it's Isra, Isra, and then L, like, and I want to show you, it's like a, con it's a combination of two words. It's Yisra and then L, like Imanu L, but Yisra L. And look what it is. It is the adopted name of Jacob, including his descendants, literally or figuratively Israel. Okay, this is so important that you get this. See, we are Israel. It's the adopted name of Jacob and all his descendants. So when we get ready, adopted, when you get turned up and the two become one, like that rock in the riverbed, you become Israel. And we're the new Jerusalem, new city of peace. We're the new temple that's at peace because Christ has made peace in us. When you get converted, that's when you're at peace inside of you. Okay, then you're waiting, expectantly waiting for the second coming of Christ. All of us are. See, in your video, you made people think, just like Debbie, that, oh, no, that I'm doing something wrong. You can't do that. So you did a video kind of admitting to it, but then you came off the rails again, my friend, and I want to I want to help you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to beat up on you. Like, like the channels that... All, they, all they're there for is to beat up on me. And I don't want anyone to be mean at all. And if I find anyone being mean, I will rebuke them. Okay, so let me show you Psalm 25, because here we go. Let's just go through these. Okay, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me in thy past. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee I do wait. Look at the word wait here. It's kava. See it? Kava. It means to bind together, that is to collect, to expect, to gather together, to look patiently, tarry, and wait for. Okay, I want you to read all those words. Look at that. That is collect, to expect, to gather together, patiently, tarry, wait for, or upon. Now, now we're going to go to Revelation. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. And then I'm going to show you something supernatural. Okay, so behold, he cometh with the clouds. Say this out loud, cloudiness, concretely a cloud. Now, again, James, in your video, you, you when you went to 1 Thessalonians 4, you skipped over the word cloud and you went to the word air. And you said, see, it means where it's respiration, but you totally ignored the word cloud. We will be caught up to meet the Lord in the clouds so we'll be caught up watch let me show you here we go watch that hang on for i, I don't want to butcher it so first thessalonians 4 ready here we go pay attention everybody please pay attention okay then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to seize to catch up and away so let me ask you a question does the word caught up say he's going to seize and take something away? It's a yes or no answer. The answer is yes. It says to seize in various applications, to catch away, to catch up, to take by force. You know why? Because he's taking it from the serpent system because he bought it from the serpent system. So he bought you, he turns you up, and you're waiting for him. When he comes, he's going to seize you and take you with him. That's what it means. Now, here's the other thing. The Bible says every eye will see him. In your most recent video, you said, no, it's not a physical thing. <clears throat> Wrong. So now you're in error again, James, and I love you in Christ. But you have to understand, how is the whole world going to see him at the same time? Every eye will see him doesn't matter where you are your eye will see him you said in your latest video it's not a physical thing we have to address that real quick again guys 
All this, everything I'm doing tonight is leading up to the Lord telling me to tell you, be waiting for him, be ready. Don't listen to the vitriol. Don't listen to the people patting someone on the back that's in error. James, I love you in Christ. You're an error on your most recent video again. Let me share it. Let me help you. Let me share it with you. I'm here to help. Okay, I want to help you. But you have to receive the help. Don't be like someone that I called and said, hey, the Lord said you're speaking contemptuously. And then instead of just admitting it and saying, hey, well, I opened a book and holy shit, it said contemptuously. I'm super sorry, Jonathan. Oh my God, I freaked out when I saw the word contemptuously. But instead of seeing the word contemptuously, it was, or the word, I'm sorry, malign, which is speak uh, to malign someone, is to speak contemptuously, which is right above the word malleable. What? That's insane or delusional or picking and choosing the words for your own reasons against the very person that the Lord God sent to lay hands on that person whom she had disdain for, which is a fact. Okay, here we go. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. It means seized by force, to be seized, to be taken by force, and it means to take for oneself. Together with, shall, shall be caught up together with them. Who's them? In the clouds. See the word clouds? What does it say? Read it out loud. What's the word? It says nephile. See, like nephilim kind of. See, nephile, clouding us. Concretely a cloud from 3509. A cloud. Let's go back to Revelation 1. Ready? Revelation 1, what does it say? Behold, he cometh with the clouds. What's the word? Cloudiness. Nephile. What's the root of it? A cloud. See, you you said, okay, he, there's not going to be a physical appearance. And let me just lay that out for you so we're clear. Okay, now this is this is for everyone to please pay attention. Pray for James. Pray for James. Don't say anything hostile to James. Be kind to James. Don't make videos with ugly faces of James. Don't call James a liar. Don't do any of that stuff. Be kind. Okay, I'm telling anyone that would be ugly, shame on you. Don't do it. Don't be Gene Rebel and everyone that follows Gene Rebel. Here we go. Ready? To the video. So I'm just going to come out straight away. And yeah, I made a mistake. Also, you probably see this... Um, cut him from from Jonathan's other video I'm gonna get into that in a minute so let me just say um, there was a huge mistake in um, what I said in one of the other videos it was it I said what I wanted to say but later in the video um, I watched it back and when I said you're tempting the Lord God it yeah it was not clear and yes, I did say, if you say he's coming and are waiting for him, you are tempting the Lord God. I was too excited and I lost focus and I didn't say the words that I should have said after that straight away. I let myself down. I let the Lord and the church down by saying that. Okay, now I'm going to pause it for just a moment. Now, James, that was really good. That was the right thing to do. But then you came off the rails again, dude. Now, I love you in Christ, but please listen. Okay, because there's some serious errors in here. So you admitted that you came off the rails and that what you said was in error. So you can't go back now and say it was still okay, which is what you do in this video. You say at the beginning of the video, I was in error, but then you use the rest of the video to say how the Lord God was confirming that you were right. It can't be both. And I'm going to show you some things scripturally, and I'm going to do speak the truth in love, James. I love you in Christ. Here's a big hug from Johnny. I love you. Just please listen, please. Okay, please listen to me. Ready? Here we go. Watch. I should have made it clearer, which I didn't at the time. Although if you had watched the rest of the video, it would have made it clearer. And But I understand that at that point, if you, so many of you would have heard that and just left. And that was my mistake. And I'm very, very sorry about that. What I should have said at the very first mention of tempting the Lord God was um, that... I just and also don't forget I'm gonna there's this red letter um, Jonathan which is whew, okay yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and what I should have said at the very first mention of tempting the Lord God was that you are tempting him by thinking and saying it is a physical event where you will see him physically when he comes, appears to you. That Okay, now see again, now again, so I need to jump in again. Uh, so I'm a servant of the Most High that sent me to Chinati, to the desert, on faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I've laid hands on people that are blind. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sitting here just trying to ring my own bell. I'm just laying out, this is a resume. This is what the Lord's had me do. Lay hands on the blind. I went and laid hands on Karen Sullivan. I've laid hands on people that have terminal illnesses. They're well. Karen's one of those people. But again, like I said, the Lord told me to call her and tell her he's going to remove all his blessings, not just from her, but from her entire family. I have to be honest. I have to do what the Lord tells me to do. Otherwise, I'm not a servant of the Most High. When I called Karen, I was in tears. I was like, Karen, I'm so I didn't want to call and say that, but the Lord told me I had to. So then Karen and Kathy and, and her team had, and Gene Rebel have all decided I'm Satan and I'm a false prophet now. So that's their, you know, their view of me now, even though I did all this good over there. But when I confronted her, all of a sudden I became the most evil man in the world. Okay. Now, you just said something, James, that's not right. Here we go. You are tempting him by thinking and saying it is a physical event where you will see him physically when he comes, appears to you. That is tempting the Lord God. I hope okay, now that's completely wrong. Again, I'm sorry, but it is completely wrong according to the word. And, and I'm saying, and according to what the Lord's shown me, even from the night I got saved. I'm saying, so I'm just saying, so just, let's just, let's just deal with it. Like again, speak the truth in love, James. I rang my, the bell on my birthday at 226. 226 in the Bible. Let me show you so you just understand what I'm doing because it very much describes what I'm doing. Okay, 226. It's Alatheo, and it, what, what it means is to speak the truth. I say, speak truth, do truth, maintain the truth. Okay, now this is very important, James. Please listen. So this was a miracle again uh, when the Lord told me, tell everybody I'm going to have you ring the bell that was sent to me that's on this little church building I have. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you to ring it on your birthday, Jonathan. I'll tell you precisely when to ring it. People were bugging me all day. I'm like, leave me alone, please. And then the Lord told me, okay, it's time to ring the bell. Corey got out the little, I gave him my, my camera, my phone camera, and I told Corey, do 50 second videos, and then we'll send them to Dave. So he videotaped it. I rang the bell, and then the Lord told me, look at the timestamp during which the bell was ringing. It was 226. The Lord said, look that up in the Bible. That's the reason I had you do it on your birthday. John 3.16, okay, Aletheo, literally truthing, speaking reality truth into a person's life, making a record of what God deems is truth, reality, and fact. Literally to truth includes spirit-led confrontation where it is vital to tell the truth so other can others can live in God's reality rather than personal illusion. And I will submit that the people that have turned their back and are all hate, hateful to me have chosen, instead of choosing malign when Karen opened that book, she should have said, yep, Johnny said I was maligning him, uh, speaking contemptuously, and there it is right there, but I'm going to put my thumb on malleable. Now I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, I'm going to give a testimony like uh, I'm in a court of law again before the Lord God. When I said, Lord, what the heck's the deal with Karen? What's the deal? He had me go open a Bible and it said, she has stiffened her neck against me. I was like, that's terrifying. That's what he told me. That's what he showed me. So I'm here to speak truth into your life where even where, when it includes spirit led confrontation, where it's vital to tell the truth so others can live in God's reality. And that was a miracle when I rang that bell. So now let's go back to here. And let's do this again. So this is incorrect. Ready? I'm going to, this red letter, um, Jonathan, which is, whew, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, and what I should have said at the very first mention of tempting the Lord God was that you are tempting him by thinking and saying it is a physical event 
where you will see him physically when he comes appears to you. That is tempting the Lord God. Okay, so let's let's go over those words one more time. I'm sorry, but you've got to understand that is completely wrong, James. I love you in Christ, but no, listen. Thinking and saying it is a physical event. So if you're thinking and saying that it's a physical event, then you're tempting the Lord God. Okay, again, that's wrong. And let me, I'm going to always use the sword of the spirit, the word of God to, you know, deal with this for everybody. This is for everybody. Okay. And again, like I said, James, without this, without all this happening, the Lord God never would have sent me over to the art gallery because I have the greatest testimony. The Lord's coming. Jesus is coming. He sent me over to the art gallery to show me the same as like he sent me to Chinati. He walked me in that art gallery and supernaturally proved to go to Chinati, which was impossible. There's no way I was going to get a plane. Not only did I get a plane, but I got two halves of the same rock. I went back to my room. I opened up to Ephesians 2. His purpose was to make one new man from the two. Uh, he said my building was split in half, but put back together. And my LZ was split in half, but there's a clear running stream. Those are mind-bending miracles, okay? So see, this ministry comes with power. The Lord's power, okay? And I think you're going to see a lot more of it here real quick. Okay, so let me show you the scripture real quick. Okay, so in Revelation 1, 3, Behold, he, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye, ready, every, it means any and all, everyone, the whole, I. Look at the word I here. It means the I, by implication, vision. Okay, the I, every eye shall see him. See the word Optonomahi, okay, optonomahi, like optometrist, Op it's probably the root of optometrist. It says, as both alternatives of 3708, to gaze, that is with eyes wide open as something remarkable. To gaze with eyes wide open, every eye will gaze with eyes wide open. You know, did you know I have a piece of artwork that I did before I got saved of Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven with his sword out and all the angels behind him? Yeah, yeah. And then all the ones that didn't listen, they're all getting torched. Yeah, and I had never read the Bible. It's kind of crazy. And it has the pit opening up, locusts coming out. I'd never even read the Bible. And a bunch of girls out front is bait. It's crazy. Yeah, so anyway, so uh, there it is again, James. So now there's a folder here for you guys. And let's see, right here. Psalm 25, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art my the God of my salvation. On thee I do wait. Okay, now um, it's an interesting word. It's bind together. But now let's go to the Psalms. I want to show you Psalm 27 because after I got saved, my mom and my dad just turned against me everybody turned against me um yeah i i mean really unbelievable stuff happened to me i'm gonna i'm gonna let max mclean read psalm um 27. okay so here we go now i had been saved uh lou had come back to town i was walking down the street and i noticed that teen rebels tell they like to make an issue of whether or not he colored lou or louie it was interchangeable. Lou, Louie, whatever. It just depended on the moment. Hey, what's up, Lou? Hey, Louie. I mean, it's all the same. But they, oh, you're lying, Clint. Okay, guys. Y'all are full of vitriol and evil. So, now, I was walking down the street in San Antonio. I, I almost couldn't process what had happened to me. The vultures had come in and just stolen all my stuff. My house, I had put in my dad's name. They're like, it's our house. I'm like, what do you mean? I paid cash for it. I paid it off. My whole note was paid off. And my cars, I left them in my parents' name because I was in this situation with children that were out of wedlock. And my parents were like, she's going to try and take everything you got. And I said, they said, leave it in our name. So I left the house in their name, cars in their name. And then guess what? They were the ones that took it. <laughs> I was like, okay, good job. And that's when I got converted. And I was walking down the street, guys, and I was like going, what in the world 
has happened. I was talking to the Lord walking. I didn't even have a car. I was like, I don't even know what's going on. And I was walking down the street. I'm like, I don't get it, man. You know, I don't know what's going on. Everyone's like against me now. And I looked over and there was a used car lot, mom and pop shop. And they had a marquee and all it said was Psalm 27. Psalm 27. And I heard the Lord say, read Psalm 27. So I had my cell phone and I was walking and I called Lou and I said, hey, Lou, do you have a Bible? And she said, yeah, you know, there's a Bible there. And she said, I said, could you read me Psalm 27? So let me let y'all hear Psalm 27. This is what the Lord said to me. This is a direct Jonathan, I'm talking to you right now, way back then. But I'm sure Gene Revel will tell you I'm a liar. And all the Psalm people, and all the people that follow him. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To I'm going to pause it there for a second. You know what's insane? The house that I'm in right now, that I tried not to take, my dad wanted to give it to me, it was such a wreck and such a dump. It had been completely flooded. It was un had been completely underwater. Three feet of water had been in the entire house. It was a wreck. And my dad wanted to give it to me to clear his conscience for taking all the money he had taken from me during the time uh, after I'd gotten saved when everyone turned against me. The ticket on that would be a little over $300,000. And, and, um, and my dad wanted to clear his conscience. And so he offered me the house that I'm in right now. And, and I didn't want it, but the Lord made sure I got it. And on this house are three het symbols in the orientation of the crosses of Christ. Het is the number eight. So 888. And in, in, in Gematria, 888 is Jesus, our, our Savior, Jesus, our salvation. Yep. So my house literally has... Jesus' name on it in Gematria in red clay bricks. That's a miracle. That's not possible. Here we go. Let's go back. The one thing that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Here we go. Let's go back. Behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Okay, I want to just stop it again. Think about this. He shall set he shall set me upon a rock. And I happen to be the rock, the guy with the rock in Chinati that he sent to Black Rock to throw him in the water. That's not even possible. This is one of the first scriptures the Lord God ever gave me. So I hope you see that my entire walk with the Lord has been not just miraculous, it's been predestined miraculous. Falling out of the sky upside down with things on, sky surfing looking like I'm crucified with the discovery launching behind me. You know that's not possible, right? But it all happened. Here we go. He sent me upon a rock. That's where I'm at now. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for 
false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted. And Boy, is that the truth. Just go to Gene Rebel's channel and, and look at, at the witnesses. Just go look. Just go read all their comments. They're the ones that are trying to pat you on the back right now, James. I'd be terrified of that. That in of itself should terrify you. The people that are his cheerleaders are coming to pat you on the back. That should terrify you. As I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say. On the oh, wow. So, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, I'm here to tell you right now, I'm looking at anyone and everyone that's watching this video. I am telling you, in the past 48 hours, so many crazy supernatural things have happened. I put them in a folder, but they're all the same thing. Be looking and waiting now. And I'm going to show you what he did, how he did it. He actually woke me up and I was awakened at 3.22. It's... It's a little more complicated than that, but I, I documented it. I was awakened at 3.20. I had to go to bed last night at 6.30. I had such a pounding headache from all the supernatural things that had happened, and I was just trying to process it. And I told Corey and Zach, I said, I got to lay down for a little while. My head is pounding. And I laid down, and I, I was awakened, and there was a noise in my room. And I was like, <laughs> and I was awakened to a noise, and I was like, well, because I had laid down so early, I'd planned on doing a video last night. But I, I awakened to this noise, and I was like, what time is it? And I looked at my phone, and it said 3.20. And I was like, wow, it's 3.20 a.m.? And I was like, that's crazy that it was 3.20. So I walked around my bed to hear, because I heard this noise, and I had the lights that are the basically make the paint on my sculpture in my room. And one of the lights was making a noise because it had gotten very hot. It was moving. The lights have motors. And so this one light had gotten very hot and they can catch on fire. And so I went over there and I felt it and the light was very hot. And it was going. <laughs> and so I started unplugging and I heard the Lord say, Jonathan, document the time right now. And I went, Lord, I saw the time when I woke up. It was 320. And the Lord said, no, document it right now. So I documented the time. It was 3.22 a.m. And the Lord told me, look up 3.22, not in one way, in several ways. And that's going to be part of this testimony. It's absolutely unbelievable. That's just one little thing. He sent me to the art gallery. To let y'all know it's time to be watching and waiting okay gonna keep going here we go wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart wait i say on the lord if that's someone that's already been uh received the holy spirit which i had already received the holy spirit i was walking down the road going what just happened this is crazy everyone turned against me well, that's because I was born again in the serpent's territory. Collect to expect. So if I'm expecting the Lord, shouldn't I be, I'm waiting on him. I'm expecting to look up and go, oh, what? And then probably we'll all look up and then it'll be boom. A bunch of souls leave their bodies and they coalesce with one. And then everybody that looked up and was like, only the ones that were ready went in. That's why it says, Blessed is that servant whom when the Lord comes finds watching, waiting. That's what the Bible says. Blessed is the servant who is found waiting when the Lord arrives. The five, the foolish and the five wise virgins, the wise ones, they were ready and waiting. That's why all these scriptures say the same thing. But look at this. This is from right after I got saved. Wait on the Lord. I say wait. Because he's going to collect us to expect. 
and gathered together. Now I'm just going to be straightforward again. I believe this entire situation that the Lord used was a way to shake everybody and say, guys, you need to sh sh rouse yourselves. Don't be asleep. Be vigilant. Be ready and be waiting. Because he took me to the art gallery and you haven't even seen the craziness from the art gallery. Not to mention the other miracles that go with it. It's like, and I'm trying to do everything in one video where I try and help James. I try and show what the, the Gene Rebel and their group's all about. They're just a bunch of haters. And now they're over at James's channel going, oh, go get him, James. Go. Oh, James, you're doing so good. But James, you just came off the rails again. You said in your video that if you're looking for a physical appearance, you're wrong. We're supposed to be looking for him. He'll come on, coming on the clouds of heaven. Behold, as lightning shineth from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And every eye shall see him. He shall be coming on the clouds of heaven. So see, you're going against all that in scripture. Now there's some other stuff in your video too, James. It's very concerning. And uh, I might have to just see if we can have a private on this one. So I don't want to throw you under the bus as hard as is on this page because there's some stuff on here that you absolutely shouldn't have done in your video. I told you in your video, please let your yay be yay and your let your yes be yes and your no be no. Just speak yes or no. But in your video you just did you did some stuff you really shouldn't have done. I had even warned everybody about it in my video. I said, you know what? I've been in courtrooms and they try and get you to put your hand on the Bible and say, I solemnly swear to take, tell you, you're never supposed to take an oath ever. You're never supposed to say, oh, I swear. I promise. I promise. Never, never above all things, never take an oath. Don't say, oh, I promise. I promise. I swear. Never. James chapter five. Matthew 5, you know what, let's just get it out of the way real quick, okay, and then just heed the warning, ready, everybody, heed the warning, here we go, okay, James, cha uh, this is James chapter 5, grudge not against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned, behold, the judge stand at the door, look at the word grudge, it means to make intransitively to be in straits, James, you are in straits, it means to sigh. It means inaudibly to groan, to grudge. Uh, if you go through your videos, you're doing a lot of sighing and a lot of groaning and a lot of grudging. But here's what's most concerning right here, please. Just please listen. Take my, bro take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Boy, that's the truth. Behold, count, we count then happy who endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and you have seen that at the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and t full of tender mercy. Now, here you go, guys. Above all things, all, every whole, above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. Okay, you see it? A limit, restraint, a, uh, an oath, any oath. When you say, I promise, I promise the Lord is telling me this. You're never supposed to do that. Any teacher should know that. Anyone that teaches should know that. You never say, oh, I swear, I promise, I promise. You did it three times during your video. The Bible says in, in Matthew, any such speaking is evil. So let's just address it and you can repent of it. Okay. That would be good. Okay. Okay. Now, J James, I love you in Christ. Please, please, please listen to me, please. Nobody, look, I tell people that this is like, you can go find videos. I'm like, okay, I'll admit I'm kind of crusty. So I'm kind of a dick sometimes and I'm sorry. But I'm here to do the best I can to help everybody make it to the end of this race. Those are those are words you'll hear out of me. You'll never hear anyone that's truly humble ever tell people how humble and how genuine they are. I'm so humble, you guys. Can you imagine me saying that? 
I'd be like, shut the F up, Click. No. Nobody should ever say that. Okay, so let's just be honest. Here we go. Let's go. It's perfect. Matches the video that I did when I posted it back. The last video that's had like a kabillion messages of... There's not a kabillion, James, so now you're really kind of going out on a limb there. There's like a kabillion messages. Okay, hang on. I'm shocked at some of the messages I've received. I am so humble and so genuine. I'm really sad that that's happened. Anyway, yourself and everyone has misinterpreted the word of the Lord. That was so clear when I saw that. That was so clear. He removed all of those words and left his word. Defending. Defending. You're I'm going to stop you for a moment because also you're, you're, you're choosing the word defending like that's God's word. You're telling everybody that's God's word. You, you negated the entire comment to James. You can't do that. You can't pick and choose. Oh, he left only that one word. James, he took the red words away, and I know why, because the red represents him, and the red is leaving here. Do you understand? His spirit is about to leave the earth. So, please, now listen. Yourself and everyone missed it, because he knows my heart. And although it wasn't the best delivery of that first um, video, I was delivering his message. And that message, no one would have seen that apart from me. And when I saw it, I cried because he wanted me to know that he was defending me. I okay, now, hang on. I promise, yeah. His message, and that message, no one would have seen that apart from me. And when I saw it, I cried because he wanted me to know that he was defending me. I promise. Okay, so now you just said none of us were good enough to see it, only you. So it's very self-centric, and you're saying, I promise. Okay, you just did something that any teacher should know. You don't sit there and tell everybody, I promise, I promise. God's telling me to do this because the Bible says in Matthew 5, any such language is evil. Don't ever take an oath. A promise is an oath. You're saying, I promise that he did it. I promise. And you did it several times. So let's just get this over with and move on. Ready? Yeah. Okay. A lot of you, I know, will still be very shocked at this. We'll be very, very shocked. but. Let's just get to the 924 mark real quick. Okay, so there we go. Ready? Or hear the things that I'm saying, because if you could hear the things that I'm saying, you would hear him. It doesn't save. It doesn't. It's the beginning of salvation. It's the beginning of salvation. I don't know why you can't see him or hear the things that I'm saying, because if you could. Okay, now I'm, I got to jump in, James. Are you suggesting that I don't hear the Lord? I went to Chinati and he gave, Chinati's only one. The Lord had me do Grand Junction, Chinati, Kill Double Hills, and Black Rock. Everything was supernatural. There's folders and videos on all of it, James. He's had me lay hands on people that are blind, not just one. Lexi, Juan Longoria, Under the House, George, uh, Karen, uh, Kat's husband, and other people. There's others in there as well. Uh, Mark from the gyms, he had terminal cancer or he had colon cancer. Anyway, but the Lord's had me do all these supernatural works, James. He has, you've done none of those works. So you can't be telling me that, see, I can't see, and you're saying you're the only one that can see. I promise, I promise the Lord said it. That's very concerning. And I'll show you the scripture. So let's get back to it. Here we go, one more time. Are you showing the world with all the um, um, duplicity here? Yes, that's very valid. But I'm sorry, this alone doesn't save. It doesn't. It's the beginning of salvation. It's the beginning of salvation. I don't know why you can't see him or hear the things that I'm saying. Because if you could hear the things that I'm saying, you would hear him. You would see him. I know that sounds, it sounds so vain and arrogant, but I promise you it is not. I promise you it's... Okay, now, so see, there you go. So you're, you're saying that you know, only you have this, only, you know, I mean, see, I document everything, James. I document everything. 
whether or not I walk into an art gallery that has a painting, Melvin Warren, the Lord told me, look up Melvin Warren. So I document it. I documented me going into the art gallery yesterday and it's mind boggling. The Lord used the art gallery to tell me I'm supposed to tell everyone to be watching and waiting. And you're flying in complete opposition to that. And you have all these lunatics from uh, Gene Rebels channel patting you on the back. That should terrify you. If you go look at Gene Rebels channel with the spike in the eye, you know, which is completely evil. Just go look at every moniker for every vid video. That's evil. I mean, you all you have to do is look at the channel. It's evil. It's all just vitriol and hatred and maligning and malice. There's no Jesus in any of that. But they're all sitting here championing you. Doesn't that concern you? That should scare the crap out of you. Okay, here we go. I promise, I promise. Because if you could hear the things that I'm saying, you would hear him. You would see him. I know that sounds, it sounds so vain and arrogant, but I promise you it is not. I promise you. It's, I'm so excited and have so much joy because it's huge. I want everyone to be super happy and super excited. Yeah, I love you in Christ again. You seem like a very nice guy. But you're, you just said, I promise, I promise that what you're showing us is from the Lord. The Lord never has a servant deliver and say, I promise, I promise, I swear, or any of that. So you're taking oaths now. Okay, now, let's just do that real quick in the scriptures. Okay, so this is the this is Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, you know. So, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, I wonder if that's you being persecuted for righteousness sake. James, I, don't, I, I can say I don't think so, but I can assure you that uh, this ministry has been severely persecuted for doing the right thing. Blessed are when men shall revile you. Well, then I am blessed <laughs> and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. Yay, I'm super blessed. Uh, uh, say all manner of evil against you falsely. Boy, that's the truth. For my name's sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Okay, now here we go. Now here we go. Just be, here we go. It's highlighted. It says oaths. You see the word oath? Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Okay, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. So the word swear, it means to swear, that is to declare an oath. Okay, do you know when you say, I promise, I promise the Lord is telling me this, that's an oath. You're taking an oath. You're promising everyone that God is telling you what you're telling everybody. Here's what the Lord says about that. The writing's in red, so you cannot argue with this. It says, but when you say unto you, swear not at but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, and neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst make one hair white or black. Let your communication be yea, yea. Nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. That means e evil, and I'm sorry, but that's it. So, now you must receive that because that's exactly what you're doing. You're saying, the Lord told me, I swear, I swear, but what you're swearing to in the very first beginning of the video, James, is you're swearing that no one's going to see him physically, which flies in the face, again, of the scriptures, bro. So I love you in Christ. I pray that you just heed the warning. Don't pick malleable. Say, you know, don't be, you know, don't, 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 don't do the wrong thing. Heed the warning and say, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to do what Johnny said. I'm just going to sit back, pray, leave it alone. 
let the Lord do his work. Watch the videos I'm about to do because the Lord just took me into the art gallery and he's letting us know it's time to watch. I want you guys to be watching and waiting. And without all this happening, James, I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, I, there's no way the Lord, well, he would have communicated some other way to make sure that I'm like, hey, everybody, now's a good time to uh, wake up, be watching, be waiting, because he walked me into an art gallery, and he also woke me up at 3.20, and he had me document the time is 3.22, and he proved to me that it's time to start watching. Just saying. There was a time I had to pack my car to go to Chinati. The only way I had the confidence to go to Chinati was because he took me to the art gallery and he walked me in there and he showed me those, you know, that painting. And the guy said, oh, everything's from, you know, basically Big Bend, which is where I was going. Chinati's in Big Bend. Okay, so anyway, so let's, uh, let's keep going. Okay, James, uh, right now for you, bro, my friend, listen, I'm going to call it quits on... There, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. There's a lot more. Um, if you want to contact me, um, I'll leave a link that you can send me an email. And if you want me to call you, I will call you and talk to you. And we can have a conversation. But this is very important, okay? I really ho hope and pray that you listen. And I hope you know that all three of us here have been praying for you. Not like uh, doing a Gene Rebel channel. Okay. That's how you know. Something's not right, bro. You better watch out. Okay, so th we're done with that. So now, everything, the stage is set for, what did the Lord do to show Johnny to tell everybody to watch and wait? I'm freaking out, okay? My left leg feels like it's going to fall off right now. So I'm going to pause my video, run in, get some water. And then see about if I can add another hour to this video. If my leg says no, I'll do the next hour in the morning. So here we go. Give me a minute. All right, guys. So anyway, so here we go. And and again, uh, James, I I'm I love you in Christ. God bless you. I I look. I admire your enthusiasm and in your your kindness, you know, in your voice. And I I know you're trying, and that's that's admirable. And it, but. Again, you know, the comments that I left you, um, you know, it's my job to make sure, I, you know, Alatheo, what is it, 226, what, right? 226, I mean, this was given to me on my birthday. This is what you will do, Jonathan. Alatheo, you will, spirit-led confrontation where it is vital to tell the truth to others so they can live in God's reality rather than personal illusion. And I know a lot of people that have gone the wrong way and they're living in personal illusion. And I, and I feel terrible for them. It's horrible. I, every time it happens, it's like, it's so depressing. I almost don't know what to do to deal with it. And so I'm talking to you, man. I, you know, if you go and you, and you acknowledge that you just did a video where you said yes, at the beginning of your new video, James, you, you admitted Yes, I was wrong. I delivered this incorrectly and you can see, but then you went back and you tried to defend it. And I'm not going to get into the whole thing you did with the word defending and the red lettering, because from the guy that wrote the comment and watched the miracle happen, what the Lord showed me is completely different than what you're trying to say. And you discounted all the other words that were left there before the word defending that were all in white. You didn't read any of them. And then when you read the comment, my comment, you went and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. You didn't even read the words. You just said like, blah, 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 blah. But you didn't even read the words out loud. So anyway, I love you in Christ. Please heed my warning. Please. I'm begging you. I do not want to see you go by the wayside. Okay. So. Wow, there's some really big noises going on around here interesting all right anyway so peace and grace james and to all of you and to everyone that watches this video i love you in christ there's a very crazy exciting video i want to do i've been doing two hours right here and it's been kind of a 
conglomeration video of just touching on a bunch of stuff. I'm going to save the art gallery, <laughs> the art gallery and the, and all the miracles that go with the art gallery are so crazy. It's like getting ready to go to Chinati, but I'm not going to Chinati. I'm supposed to tell y'all to start being vigilant, ready and waiting. Isn't that weird that the way this all happened? I'm like, what? I would not even be doing this had this thing not happened. And by the way, this is really fascinating. James has been out there for a while. Okay, well, I've never had anything that led me to go have any confrontation with James. Um, but recently, because of someone I know that sent, was sending out James's stuff, I went to look at it and I watched about five minutes, just being honest, I watched about five minutes and I'm like, okay, he seems like he's nice and he's trying, good for him. And then I just slid my cursor over like to the 12 minute mark and I wasn't planning on watching anymore. So it was like the Lord did it. So I slid my cursor over and it was like thing and he kept talking. And then I heard of some words and I was like, what? What did you say? And I was like, no, dude. And then I went and rewound and I watched again and I'm like, what? And then I rewound even further and I'm like, what? And that's when I heard the Lord say, I want you to address this. And I prayed over and over again and the Lord nailed it every time. Go address it. Stop it. Put your foot down, Jonathan. I was like, I hate doing these kind of videos, Lord. You have to. So I do what the Lord says. The Lord has told me to walk into the FBI and show them all the bombings on the U.S. currency notes. I did not want to go do that. That was not a meeting I wanted to go to. But I went and did it. And see, there's a, these people at Gene Rebels channel and the people that are trying to pat you on the back, they're calling me a false prophet and a liar all the time. It's just their natural speech now. Even though I laid hands on one of them that would already be in the grave by now had the Lord not sent me. Anyway, just saying. True or not true, Karen? True or not true? Okay. All right. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, guys. The king's coming. The king is coming. I'm a harbinger. As a matter of fact, remember the Jonathan Kleck? The Lord said, look up Kleck as a... Uh, a coat of arms and I was like what and I typed into Google collect coat of arms and it brought up a, a king's crown and a shofar well Karen's husband Jim he went around trying to discredit that to discredit the meaning of my name that's twisted that's just pathetic and by the way you're welcome for standing in the gap for you guys when everybody was trying to come get you <laughs> so crazy anyway all right peace and grace guys i love you guys in christ the king's coming and i'm here to proclaim it no matter what anybody says jesus is coming the king is coming i don't know the hour of the day nobody does but i'm going to proclaim the coming of the king amen you know what i didn't do the bear hug and the lord put another scripture in front of me and i got to show you the scripture sorry revelation 16 15 so yeah super important uh scripture because, see, he's telling you to be vigilant and ready and waiting. Okay, now I want you to look at this. This is the book of Revelation. You see all the writing is in black. See, it's all in black. But look at the red. Look at the red. Look at it. Behold, I come as a thief. Let's look at the word thief. A stealer. Kleptase. Two feet. To filch, to steal. I come as a thief. Blessed. Look at the word blessed. Supremely blessed. Fortunate. Blessed is he that watcheth to keep awake, to watch, literally and figuratively, to be vigilant, to be watchful. Let's look at the root of the word. Through the idea of collecting one's faculties, to rouse literally from sleep. Okay, look, to lift up, to raise up again, to rise up, stand up. Okay, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth by keeping, oh, look at this, 
It means a watch to guard from loss or injury. I know this word by keeping the eye upon. Blessed is he that keepeth his garments to put on outer outer apparel, his cloak, that keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Oh, wow. Look at the word shame. That's weird. Pudinda. What? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> didn't see that coming. Okay, so anyway, yeah. So, Revelation 16. Blessed is the one that is watching and waiting. So, see, there it is. So, we're supposed to be watching and waiting. And it is a physical appearance. It may not be like a flesh body right in front of you. Of course not. But we're supposed to look up and every eye will see him. That's a physical appearance. And it's going to happen. So, anyway. Okay, I love you guys in Christ. Let's grab Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear, come here. Okay, James, this is you. Johnny loves you in Christ. I love you. Don't be, don't be, don't be down. I'm not here to kick you, bro. I'm here to just pat you on the back, lift you up, give you a hug, give you a couple pats. Say, now go back out there, take a break, uh, get in the Word, and don't, feel like you need to make another video take a break okay take a break <laughs> it's like i'm serious heed the warning don't pick malleable okay i love you bro anyway so let's see what else that's about it so now here's the next video <gasps> the art gallery ah freak out i freaked out i was like <gasps> no and then the lord woke me up at 320 but he said document the time immediately and I was like well I woke up it was 320 and the Lord said document the time it was 322 and I have a folder and I have the other miracles that rolled out and Corey and Zach were witnesses again when the Lord told me I want you to go over to the art gallery now we were in a park eating like a we picked up some to-go food and we were sitting in like a park at a picnic bench just eating lunch and out of nowhere the Lord said I want you to go by the art gallery and then I so I'm gonna show you how he got me to go to Black Rock <laughs> and then what he use the art gallery for again isn't it fascinating how he does stuff how he communicates anyway all right the rest of you all of you I love you in Christ Gene Revel here's a hug for you buddy <laughs> Karen and Kathy Here's a hug for you guys. I'm still praying for y'all. Jim, here's like a nudge on the shoulder and a hug from Johnny. Stop it. Stop. Chuck, I love you in Christ. Well, Johnny, I love you too. <laughs> All right, guys. Peace and grace. Everybody be happy. The king's coming. Don't be mean. Don't follow anyone that's mean. Get away from anyone that's mean. Don't do it. Okay, that's, that's the opposite of the Lord. All right. His purpose was to make a super good sandwich at past 10 o'clock with some chips <laughs> to make one new man from the two. That's making peace. I love you guys in Christ. The King's coming. I'm super excited because the Lord walked me in the art gallery, guys, and y'all don't even know what it's all about yet. It's the emanation of the Holy Spirit on the road.